Let's continue with an introduction to the life cycle of fungi. I mentioned in my previous presentation that fungi can be amazing. And I mentioned as an example, uh, this um, golden mushroom that lives in the state of Oregon, the oldest, well, maybe not the oldest, but one of the oldest living organisms on earth and definitely the most massive, the, the, the largest organism we know about on earth. Another part where fungi can be interesting is that they can engage in both kinds of reproduction, sexual and asexual. But we're going to be focusing first on sexual reproduction. When there are two distinct fungi living in close proximity, their hyphae may meet and engage in a form of sexual reproduction. But remember that these hyphae, hyphae are living inside the ground inside dead wood. And so how can they find a mate when they are living in a place where it's completely dark? Well, this is another reason I think fungi can be remarkably amazing. And it's going to be the fact that mating hyphae, like the ones you see in this illustration, I'm going to activate my, oops, laser pointer. Let's see if I can get it to work for me. We go. So as you can see, here's the end of a hypha from one fungus, and here's going to be another hypha from another fungus. Uh, notice that there are no septa here, just nuclei, which is what those dots represent. They are going to grow in the direction of another. And so how do they know they're growing in the direction of a potential mate? And here's how they do it. Fungi are known to produce pheromones. A pheromone is a chemical a chemical uh, produced by, per, by an organism and released to the outside so that they can attract a mate. Animals, for example, use pheromones uh, where males attract females, but in the case of a fungus, the pheromone is going to be to attract or to make the growth of one hypha in the direction of the other hypha. So when they mate, there's going to be a fusion of the two hypha. There's a name for this, I'm gonna tell you in just a moment. And then nuclei can be exchanged between the two mating hypha. Let's take a look up close at this general representation of the life cycles of fungi with a few variations. Uh, you may learn more about the basidomycetes, ascomycetes, zygomycetes, but in general, this is how fungi can reproduce. And right now we're talking about sexual reproduction. When two hypha meet, the process is called plasmogamy. Plasm because their cytoplasm joins. Gamy means union, like monogamy, when there is a relationship exclusively between two people. So plasmogamy or plasmogamy, you may choose to pronounce it uh, either way, is going to be when the two hypha meet. Then nuclei are going to come in close proximity from the two different hypha, but they don't fuse like they do in fertilization, where the nucleus of the egg and the nucleus of the sperm immediately join each other. Instead, the two nuclei will not fuse right away. They can live right there next to one another, and when they do that, they form a structure known as a heterocarion. So let's follow this cycle. Following plasmogamy, the union of the two hypha, nuclei are going to come closer from each hypha and form the heterocarion. Hetero means another, carion means nucleus, like prokaryotic without nucleus. Eukaryotic means they have a true nucleus. So carion means nucleus, remember that. In this heterocarion stage, uh, the hypha may remain for uh, a long time. Sometimes the two nuclei, one from each hypha, can be uh, kept apart from the rest of the hypha by means of septa. And you know what septa means in terms of fungi by now. And for something called, form something called a dicarion. Di means two. Carion means nucleus. And so there's going to be a dicaryotic stage over here. And as I have just mentioned, uh, it can last for hours or days or weeks or months or even centuries. 
hundreds of years can pass, and those two nuclei don't want to fuse, but eventually they do. And when two nuclei fuse, the process is called karyogamy. Karyogamy or karyogamy are two different ways you can pronounce it. Remember, karyo means nucleus, gamy means union, the union of two nuclei that came from two different hypha finally takes place. And now you have a stage called the zygote. The zygote is the only part in the life cycle of a fungus that is going to be deployed. And it's not something you typically see. So whenever you see mushrooms, whenever you see molds growing on one place, you're looking at a haploid organism. Most of the life cycle of a fungus is spent in a haploid stage. And the structures you see of a fungus are going to be made up by haploid uh, cells in Haifa. So what does the zygote do? Almost immediately goes through the process of meiosis. And you've learned in Bio211 that meiosis cuts the number of chromosomes in half, so a diploid zygote forms haploid spores, usually four to begin with, four spores. And sometimes they go on and divide and make more spores. Uh, but those spores now have a choice. They can engage once again into the making of a mycelium for the purpose of sexual reproduction, or they can grow into a mycelium that is just going to go through another stage of the life cycle of fungi, which is going to be the asexual stage. Let's consider what happens here in the asexual stage. The mycelium uses some of the nuclei in their hyphae to produce spore modifying structures or spore producing structures, I should say. Those spores are made from haploid nuclei and they are making haploid spores. The type of division that keeps the same number of chromosomes in the cell is going to be mitosis. So these cells in a asexual reproduction are going to be made by the process of mitosis. And those cells can germinate and again make more haploid mycelia, which can go around into the asexual reproduction stage or can go around into the sexual reproduction. What are some of the examples of asexual reproduction we can see in fungi? Maybe you've seen before at home uh, this uh, type of um, Something happened to my laser pointer. Oops, <laughs> stopped working. Maybe you've seen, uh, I'm having technical difficulties here. I'm sorry, class. Here we go. You've seen an orange like this one. Oh, it's gross, it's moldy. Well, often that greenish mold you see is penicillin, the very same mold from which Penicillin, the antibiotic for killing bacteria, is obtained. And, and it looks kind of like dusty, it looks kind of like powdery, and that's because you're looking at sometimes what appears to you like a fine powder is the spores made asexually. Asexual producing structures in fungi sometimes are known as conidia. Uh, and those conidia produce conidiospores, which are made by the process of mitosis, not meiosis. And so molds often can produce large amounts of spores asexually. That is one of the advantages of asexual reproduction. Without the need for a mate, asexually produced spores are going to be made in large amounts, in large quantities, and that is usually going to be uh, something that fungi can be opportunistic and they take advantage of the environment when conditions are right, when resources are abundant, uh, they would rather go through the process of asexual reproduction. Molds are known for doing this very easily. Another form of asexual reproduction is going to be the budding you see in fungi. See, one characteristic I think I've, I might have skipped earlier on was that fungi, members of the kingdom fungi are multicellular. But then there's always that one exception, right? And the exception is going to be yeast cells, which you can see here in this illustration. Yeasts are single cell organisms, but there's at least one part of their life cycle when you can see two cells, and when you have two, that qualifies as multicellular. And so look at what is happening over here. One mature yeast cell 
it's making another one as an outgrowth and that's called budding. You may remember, for example, when we learned about the process of budding with Hydra. So here, another cell is budding from the parent cell and there are two cells at some point that are still connected and some scientists argue, well, see, this is the point where yeasts, even though they are for the most part single cell, uh, there's going to be a moment where they can be like a two cell type of an organism. Uh, so you can see those buds. To me, they resemble kind of like a bowling pin. If you've ever gone bowling, it's, it's a fun sport. And um, there's the smaller cell is usually what we call the bud. Those cells are made asexually because they come as a process of cell division similar to what you see in mitosis. So the making of asexual spores uh, by the process of mitosis and the making of buds also by a type of cell division similar to mitosis is going to be how fungi can do asexual reproduction.